What is up, everybody? This is Fresh Wind Youth Online. I am Pastor Jared, and with me, as always, is the main girl, Allison. What's up? <laughs> it's been a few weeks, but hey, what's up? Yeah, you've been like disappeared on us. You had okay, we were sick. Excuses, and then you had a family thing to go to, and I can totally yeah. respect that, and that's okay. But she's back. Yep, I'm back. And we're good. What are we doing here? I'm back. We're um sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we're here for the four part online series that we do every Wednesday at six p.m. That'll drop to Facebook, Instagram, mm. YouTube, yep. and the A Fresh Wind app. And uh, that A Fresh Wind app, it's pretty awesome. If I do say so myself, you can mm-hmm. catch us on there. You can catch all the previous sermons we've had on Sunday mornings on there. We got a calendar on there. Parent parents, we got the Parent Hub on there, right? Parents. I tell you got parents on there yeah we've actually <laughs> stolen all of your parents and put them on the parent hub is the right word stolen i don't know if it's kidnapped Stole. i guess you could still technically kidnap an adult adult napped you've been adult napped <laughs> okay. so also on top of these awesome videos that you're watching which uh lucky you by the way um we get together every sunday morning at 9 30 a.m and on the fourth sunday we get some grub last ooh, time ooh. we've been doing some donuts we did bob evans once I'm open to recommendations. I obviously like some food. Let's be real here. So if you got something you want us to bring in, head us up. We'll see what we can do. But then we have the freshman youth hangout. The second would be like Oreos. I'd bring Oreos Oreos for breakfast. I don't like Oreos. Yo, I know specific people in the youth group. You've just ostracized. The white part of an Oreo is so nasty. It's delicious. Dunk it in some milk. Let's 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 adjust this, John. Why do you why do you hate happiness? No, I don't I don't okay. Let me <laughs> let me let me be a bearer of bad news here. The white part is gross and the chocolate part doesn't have enough goodness in it to make up for that. So it's just like I'm eating it, I'm like, dude, this is so bad for me, and it's gross. <laughs> Fair enough. I can't argue like with chips that. Chips Ahoy. Like the cereal? No, yeah. the chocolate chip cookies. Yo, the no, cereal is dang too. They're so dry. You open it up, it's like <laughs> Do you not drink or do you not milk your cookies with milk? Do you I, not eat your cookies with milk? Do you not milk? milk your cookies? <laughs> but I can't rely. But dude, if your food has to rely on milk for it to be good, bro. No. He's got a point. I don't need to buy the they DLC, They make chewy bro. chips ahoy. I don't know. That's all I'm who, saying. Those are bad. Mediocre at best. <laughs> That's why you've never had them. I've saved you from right, them. That one, last thing, big... one last thing. One last thing. One last thing. One last thing. We're going to hold um, hands the entire What are they video. called? Those 50 cent cookies that you got from the dollar store back Fudge rounds? Day, those are so bad. I had one recently. They again, are really bad. And they're so much worse than I remember. Like when they're I was so like worse. poor and young, I was like, these are fire. And then I got one recently. I was like, this is the no. one. It tastes like I'm eating clay. It's delicious clay. Okay. Really. All right. Moving on. Let's get back to the That was a long part. tangent. Way long. Right out the rip, we so got anyways, to a tangent. anyways, John is here with us today. No, I didn't tell him about the, the hangout, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Bro. Oh, Skipping right here. past so it. So the second week, I've been adjusting the day depending on people's schedules and everything. This week, if you're watching on Wednesday, we have until Saturday to get together because we're going to a sky zone. We're going to be bouncing around a having a good time. Zone. John has to come. And if he doesn't, I'm going to kneecap him. I've been to every event. I know because you awesome. Uh, that being said, we got John with us. Say what's Hi. up, John. Hello. Let, you've me. said some stuff already. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Those are his adoring fans. <laughs> All right. So the question of the day that you need to throw a comment on is. There's actually a drum roll thing. Allison didn't oh. catch the hint. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a joke. No. Is do you stand for something? And if so, what is it? I know that's kind of a loaded question. It's like, the Pledge of Allegiance again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what All I meant. All your questions are slowly working toward America. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant if you see an injustice in the world, right? We're, this is the series Justice for All. But when you see an injustice in the world, are you standing for it? And if so, do you have one specifically that you're into, like you're, you're passionate about right now? And that's what I want to know. John, in our series Justice for All, what do you stand for? <laughs> I hate you. Uh, Next just, week is the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, no, we lost the notes. It's just a funny question. Yeah, it's just going to be a 15-minute video of us saying the Pledge of Allegiance over, over and over and over. over. All right, guys, it's time for the game. Do you know what that means, John? You're yeah, going to make some bad that. guesses again. Game, right? Dude, I was really close. What was that? What you did were. I, what did I you say You were yesterday? close when you said something about a rope swing. So keep that in mind. That's for you he guys got as this well. offline, though. It's not even real. So it does have to do with rope. I will give you that. 
Whatever, bro. Man got it on now. The ropes free course website. at Play CLE. Wrong. All right. So no, we, he's not real. He didn't record it. <laughs> Some stranger recorded it. He's so bent on that. I'm so mad. All right, I'm gonna click play, John. You know the rules. How this works? If it's your first time catching, we're gonna play the sound for a minute, as many times as John wants. <laughs> John can ask questions, yes or no, things like that. Nothing incredibly specific that I'm gonna give it away on. I'm gonna keep you voting. What is it? Yeah, you can't ask that. But at the end of that minute, he's got one last question, one last play, and then the guest. Yes. <laughs> and then the guest comes out. Yeah, we have another guest. <laughs> <I> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that, John makes his one last ask. He can ask one last question. We All give right, him one last play. Then he guesses, and that's it. I'm so ready, ready set, go. Keep playing it. Is it? Is See, it a swing? It is not a swing. That end of it, you could pretty much ignore. That kind of is like, throwing you for a loop. Is that someone getting off of whatever this object? No, is? no, no, no. Okay. Did you watch a video as well with this? Nope. So this is just a noise. Yep. Nope. So you just looked at a PNG file and it said his name. No, it's a sound effects file. You know what I meant to say. I'm pretty sure we got copyrighted for it. We may have. Hey. I told you it wasn't free. I had said free download, so. Okay, anyway. Nine seconds. Focus on that right there. Dude, play it one more time. One more time. All right. What is hanging? I can tell you it's not something hanging. It's something being pulled? Maybe. Oh, is it people like playing tug of war? It is not, but you're you're on the right track. You know what it is, but you're not getting what's making that. But Dude, you're, it's obviously just it's a, a rope. rope being acted upon. Yes, but what is acting upon the rope? I don't know. I a, rope, a person? Oh, what? I have a guess, but I can't guess. Is it something pulling? Is it like a winch? All right, I'm not answering anything. I need one last guess from you. Um, freaking a rope being pulled by, I don't know, something. Maybe a winch or something like that. What's your final guess? You're asking, a winch. A winch? Yes. Allison, go ahead and hit the applause. That is correct. John oh, man. two applauses today. I had a few people text me this week about what it was. And they were wrong. They were. Let's go, dude. John, <laughs> you get a $10 gift card to That's, the place of your yeah. choice. Congratulations. Uh, Maddie, uh, you're amazing, and I still have to get you a gift card. I do apologize. Yeah. Just give her my give her, give my gift. You know what I'm saying? Give her me gift card. <laughs> I can't speak. You I want her gift card. Is what no, I'm trying no, to say. no. You cannot have her gift card. All right, guys, let's jump into the lesson. Allison, kick it off. Okay. Um. So today, one of the questions we're going to ask is, have you ever experienced someone's ruthlessness? And have you ever felt like someone or everyone was completely against you? Uh, maybe you've been devastated by something that's been done to you. How do you hold on to hope when you've been a victim of ruthless injustice? Injustice. That is the question to ask, right? That's yeah. the big question for today. Like when there's been an injustice in the world, when you've been wronged in a way. Dude, watch. Go ahead. Watch Jack Reacher, bro. That'll make you feel a lot of injustice. Maybe. Don't watch. Personally wronged. Wait, I don't know if I can recommend that movie or not. I don't think so. Don't. No, you can't. No, I can't. John, don't stop recommending it. movies. <laughs> don't watch it. Stop recommending movies that we can't you watch can with you. It in. You can edit in this ready. I'll do a soundbite for you. Don't. Can I, that I got you. I got you. I don't even have like a, a boo button over here. I know. We, I think I got rid of that one because it's like, oh, we'll never need to boo somebody. <laughs> you can just boo me. Okay. Boo. Oh. So that's the question though. What do you do when you've been wronged? Allison? When it feels like people are out to get us, we need a firm <clears throat> foundation to help us withstand the weight and pressure of those challenges. Mm, exactly. So we're going to dive into scripture a little bit, but before we do, Let's recap what we talked about last week. Last week, we introduced you to a guy named Joseph. This dude was cool. Uh, dripster. Dripster. That was John's word of the week last week. And he had the sweet jacket that his dad made him. It was his dad's favorite kid. And then to top it off, he very unlovingly 
decided that hey, I'm gonna tell my he brothers. Flexing on him, he's like hardcore. See the future, hardcore. He's like, yeah, God gave me dreams, and uh, Dude, my jacket is flying, and I have superpowers. And you're gonna bow to me. That's Sucks that's to gonna suck. be a thing. And so, I mean, bad choices by Joseph. Let's be let's be real Joseph here. Was on he he could have been more loving. That was what last week was about. And so taking his crazy dreams and kept him to himself. Exactly. I mean. Obviously, God gave him the dreams, and obviously, God wanted something to happen through him. So that is true. However, I Joseph did not act lovingly, lovingly in how he did it. John, let's go ahead and start <clears throat> reading Genesis thirty-seven seventeen to twenty-eight, and tell us what happens next. They moved on from there. The man said, "I heard them say, let's go to Dothan.' So Joseph set out after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him in the distance, and before he had reached them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, "Oh, look! Here comes that dream expert." So now, come on, let's kill him and throw him into one of the pits. We can say that a vicious animal ate him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save them from him, him from them. He said, let's not take his life. Reuben also said to them, don't shed blood. Throw him into this pit in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him, intending to rescue him later from, and return him to his father. When Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped off Joseph's robe, the robe of many colors that he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the pit. The pit was empty, without water. They sat down to eat a meal, and when they looked up, there was a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were carrying ar aromatic gum, balsam, and resin going down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What do we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come on, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay a hand on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When a Midianite traders passed by, his brothers, jo his brothers pulled Joseph out of the pit and sold him for 20 pieces of silvers, silver to the Ishmaelites, who took Joseph to Egypt. Did him dirty. Did yeah, him dirty. Such a, I'm sorry. I find it so funny that they're like, Let's oh, here him. comes that dream expert. <laughs> Let's see what becomes of his dreams when we kill him. Yeah, that's <laughs> so dramatic. You're sleeping forever, Joseph. <laughs> yeah, you can have all the dreams you want. Oh, my golly. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, what happened here? They saw Joseph. They said, hey, we're going to we're gonna kill him. That's going to happen. Ruben's like, Ruben was like, I don't want that on my conscience. Hey, but I'll save him in a slavery. <laughs> Sell him into slavery, like that works. Ruben was looking like a delicious sandwich. <laughs> Ruben did want to go back and save him, though, and it doesn't say whether or not Ruben's like, yeah, I'll sell him. No, that's no big deal to me. So I can't. Supposed to be like, hey guys, let's not sell him. Let's leave him in the pit. right. It was at that point. Ten Ruben on is revealing himself. Mm -hmm. If Joseph turns up after you like convince them not to sell him, yeah, I don't save him. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Ruben tried his best in this, and he was in a crappy situation. But what did you say? He was in a crappy situation. What best did you say? In this. Oh. He tried his bestest. I thought you said that unironically. I was he, like, wow. He tried his best, but he was in a crappy situation. So what happens here? They, they decide not to kill Joseph, but they sell him into slavery. Mm -hmm. And so not the, not the best story going on for Joseph right now. He wow. definitely made a big mistake at first. And then he got a pretty, pretty major injustice against him. Obviously, right. we all know slavery is wrong. And so, Allison, go ahead. All right. Um, Joseph was alone and forsaken by his brothers, but what did he have left? Um, he only had hope, like David did when he wrote Psalm 37, 7 through 8. Um, and that says, If I walk into the thick of danger, you will preserve my life from the anger of my en enemies. You will extend your hand. Your right hand will save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, Lord. Your, fa your faithful love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Mm. So, David trusted God would protect him even when people were out to harm him. Um, he faced incredible injustice and why'd you move down? He was falling down that freaking <laughs> hole. He faced incredible injustice from someone who wanted to do him harm, but he knew God was with him. He knew that he could only hold on to hope. Exactly. As he plummeted to the bottom of the well. Yes. And that honestly, that's what can you do? And it's legit when you're plummeting into he the bottom of the well. The wall. He only had hope. And when he got sold into slavery, he lost all of his rights. He only had hope. And so, yes, David came a long way after the, uh, Joseph. What, right? was the, what was the interaction between the slavers and the, and the brothers? Hold on a second. Curious. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, that's probably what it was. Joseph, Think grab the rope. We'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just no. kidding. You're a slave now. <laughs> yeah. But for like, it was normal practice. They it's probably crazy. told him that it was just some dude or it was a brother, but he was well, a this thief. this dude we found? Or He's yours now. Whatever. 
there were no there was no government to like say like hey let's not make people slaves people are ruthless people are mean and inherently wicked the bible tells us mm -hmm. and so they said hey you mean i could get a slave and make some money off my i'll give you 20 pieces of silver and sell them for 50 and 20 so pieces does seem kind of cheap it probably was and so they sold them for a tenner dude that's crazy <laughs> like, like a ten dollar bill like a ten dollar <laughs> bill like how much would that be worth now bro they sell them like a one mcdonald's happy meal I don't know. I have no idea what a piece of silver cost back yeah, then. Yeah, I don't know. But somebody do the conversions. Yeah, if you have the conversion somewhere, Ryan, Tim, I know you're probably watching, and I know you probably know this. Go ahead, comment. Tell me, uh, teach us a lesson here. Mm -hmm. What is 20 pieces of silver worth? Enlighten us. Enlighten <laughs> us. And so holding on to hope might sound like it's a, it's a, it's a good idea, but when you're, when you're feeling crushed and everything's going wrong and you feel like you're, the, you're out on an island and no one's there to help you, it's kind of hard to hold on to hope. And so John and I want to give you some tips. We're going to go back and forth like it's ping pong, right? We're going to give you four tips on the best okay, way. Nice. It's the same thing. Is it really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, We're going to give you four ways that you can best hold on hope. And what Wait, they don't use a racket in table tennis? Well, they use the paddles. It's the same why thing. Why is it called that? Because people are like, I don't play ping pong. I play tennis on a table. Oh, yeah. It's like I'm a mini of, version of tennis on a table. I think I'm thinking of that sport with the birdie. Oh, that's a bad bagman. Badman? Bagsminton. Badminton. Bagman. It's definitely not bag. I don't know. What I'm just the, saying it wrong on purpose because I know it's going to be wrong. What's the one, the L1? That Squash? Lacrosse? Lacrosse. I hate that sport. Isn't that like that, I think too? that is a... They, like, throw a ball from the See, nets. T for time. We're going to get to the lesson back in a second. Well, I played rugby, and you know how many times I'd say, oh, I play rugby, and they're like, oh, is that the one with the sticks? <laughs> I played, Lacrosse players are the worst. Hey, I played um, baseball and basketball and you soccer. Did. I'm proud of you, John. Yeah, I wasn't very <laughs> good at basketball. All right, so the first... First tip we can tell you to how to hold on to hope is first focus on the truth. And when I say focus on the truth, I mean the word of God. Get into a devotion. Whether by yourself with a group, Sunday mornings, if that's all you can all you can fit in your schedule, that's a great start. I would not recommend only relying on Sunday morning. I would recommend an everyday devotion. Um, even if it's 15 minutes. Get in there, focus on the word, spend some time with God in prayer, and focus on truth. Because that's how you should start your day to have the best day where you can hold on to hope. Because Christ is going to tell you the love that he has for you. Christ is going to tell you how to interact with your enemies. Christ is going to tell you how to deal with situations that you don't think you have the answer to. And you could focus on the truth in scripture and find that. John, what's the next one? Um, <clears throat> you can talk it out. So like, if you're feeling something like in your head or whatever, in your maybe somebody's bullying at you at school, you can talk to your parents, your brothers, your sisters, anybody. If you want to talk to the counselor at school, those people are there to help you. And maybe you feel like you can't talk to them. Maybe you feel like they're too close to you. You have too much connection with them. You can talk to a therapist or, or somebody like that who's professional and can help you work through that kind of situation. Exactly. That's a great tip. That's a lot of that's something a lot of people have a stigma about. Yeah. But honestly, like it, it is so healing when you're able to, and it is so important to just even even if you don't feel like you absolutely need one, talking to someone whose only purpose is to listen to you and to push you to be better is a great op opportunity. Mm -hmm. The next thing is ask for help. Right when when we talk about injustices, we talk about things that you may not be able to get out of, right? So maybe you're being bullied. Maybe you're being abused. Maybe you're in a rough situation somewhere where you don't know to turn. That's what he, we're here for, right? Um, as your pastor, as, I don't know what we call you necessarily. I don't know uh, if you're a pastor. pastor's wife. Yeah, as your pastor's <laughs> wife. Whatever the case may be. Sorry for that awkwardness. As your friend. As your youth leader. That's what I meant. Then I blanked and then I made my fool of myself. Uh, your your. Pastor Ryan, Pastor Tim, myself, any one of the youth leaders, um, anybody like that you truly trust to, with this information, talk to them. We're here to help you in, in situations like that, but we don't always know it. We don't always mm -hmm. see it. We don't always know what's going on to be able to help you. And so don't be afraid to ask for help. We're not going to victimize you. We're not going to make you feel um, silly or dumb or whatever. We're going to try our best to absolutely help you and help the situation and we're going to love you regardless of what's going on mm -hmm. and so john you go ahead and hit us with the next one 
<clears throat> you have to be careful with um, social media and stuff like that because you look at like uh, TikTok and Instagram and all these influencers like, you know, whatever, Charlie D'Amelio or whoever. And you're like, uh, you think you know them, but you don't know them. Like you don't know who mm. they are as a person or if they're good, bad, you know, all the stuff that happened with David Dobrik just recently. It's like people thought he was a perfect man, but he's not. He's just a regular guy. Like under the surface, under all that paint that he's put over himself to make himself look so good. He's just a regular person. Just like exactly. You, know, so you can't reg- compare yourself. A regular person with struggles who is only going to show the perfection that they can control. Right. And that's the one of the most important things that people, not even, not youth need to understand, but everybody needs to understand about social media. How often are you posting on social media when, hey, look, guys, I just got dumped. Or, hey, look, guys, I just made fun of somebody and I hurt their feelings and I feel terrible about it. Or, hey, guys, my parents are arguing again. No one's posting that. Right. It's a wild post. I don't post. <laughs> exactly. I don't post, so. no, one, no one posts those things because they don't want the world to see the pain. They don't want the world to see the, the imperfections. Mm-hmm. And so if, you, if you're claiming, if, you're, if the scale is the perfections that people will a lot willingly let you see, you're never going to meet it. Mm-hmm. Social media is great to reach out to people, but it is so dangerous when it becomes the standard. When I say to hold on to hope, it's not just some cliche that I'm using. It doesn't mean to like, hey, look on the bright side. What I mean by that is to trust in God. Trust that God is the foundation of your life. Just like Joseph did, just like David did, they had no other option but to trust that God was going to deliver them from whatever cruelty that they were put in. You have that option as well. And luckily, that option is the only thing we need in life. That's the only thing we need after life. That's the only thing we needed before life. God is bigger than any of this. Mm-hmm. And so when I say hold on to hope, what I mean is hold on to the most powerful thing in the world. That's all we got for you guys today. That's just for all week two. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to get together, joke around, have a good time, but then also just dive into your word and see how, see where you lead us, see where you Uh, hold on to us when we're struggling, when we see injustices in the world, when we see issues happening against us, when we see issues happening against other people, the people that we love. Lord, I pray that you give us the confidence to hold on to you and then the knowledge to navigate the situation, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a great week. See ya. Bye.